The following program is brought to you by Caltech. I think some things about the future are clear. Um, there's a bunch of stuff needs to be done in energy. A lot of it is going to require a shift in viewpoint. A lot of it's going to require people getting their heads around more than a tiny little slice of the field. Harold Rosen gave a great talk today about, well, what if you just thought about it different? Well, yeah, you could double the amount of, of transportation fuel you got and get electric power out of it too. That's the kind of thinking I expect out of the Caltech person. So I think, yeah, there's lots of challenges in electric power. Again, now, we're going to go through another one of those. It's going to involve a lot treating the information and the power not as separate things, but as the same thing. In the same way that FedEx says, the information about the package is just as important as the package itself. Okay, we need to do that with electric power. And yeah, yeah, yeah that, that needs to be done. The seeds of that are already going. I, I don't think, to me, that's not really future. That's today's work to make it so that it'll actually be there 50 years from now. It takes 50 years in a field like that. And that's not just because people are stuck in the mud and, and move slow and all that. It's because if it goes wrong, you don't just reboot. It takes a give, you know, substantial part of the country down. So you don't just play with it the way we do with software. It's not that kind of a problem. So it, does, it is going to take longer. But make no mistake, there'll be Caltech people there, and they'll be, they'll be there when you need to put it together in a different way and make it work. But that's, in a way, kind of obvious. It's, it's being worked now. There's a lot of resistance to it. But heck, there were a lot of resistance to this other stuff, and we managed to get it through. So what about? further out. Well, in the general area of computation and communication, um, Amnon mentioned it briefly today, um, people are just now starting to do radio techniques at optical frequencies. And that's really exciting. This whole idea of statistics and quantum mechanics is being shown to be as brain dead as it always was. And um, that's just wonderful. I read a paper the other day by Ted Hench, who's a good friend of the family here. And uh, they have a, an optical fiber length between two of their sites. And the coherence length of the photons in that fiber length is 10 to the 8th meters. So much for statistics. Yeah. The role statistics plays in quantum systems is what we engineers used to call noise. <laughs> so that's playing out. And we're getting, we're getting a finally a sensible view of what quantum, quantum systems are, not some statistical garbage that, but they're nice systems that have the properties of waves that we engineers understand. We know how to work with those. And like Ron says, we never bought it. So that's why we could keep going. Then if you look a little further out, there's one that has been, somebody said today, I think maybe it was Arthi, that's the wave of the future and always will be. Um, I've busted my own pick on this one, so I'm sensitized. We know that the brains of animals can do computation tasks orders of magnitude better than our biggest and most power-hungry computers. So what are they doing? Been a lot of progress in the last 20 years. CNS was a spin-off of EE. Uh, that was founded in order to grapple with that 
issue, among other important issues, but that was sort of the central one. Uh, that's still an important issue. There's a lot known, and every time we learn something more, we find out it's even more complicated than we imagined. And it keeps doing that. Just for example, we, people used to count neurons and compare them with gates in a logic circuit. Okay. Then they realized that those neurons were all hooked up to these little synaptic connections. And as we probed around in there and looked at it more, we found out that, oh, there's some information processing going on in those little things. Well, okay, we can count synapses. Those are, those are like gates. So we started counting synapses. Of course, there are three orders of magnitude more of those. So then the brain just got smarter, or the people looking at it got a little less stupid. <laughs> so now people are looking at the synapses, and they're realizing that, oh, they have both long-term and short-term memory in them. The long-term memory is through some kind of DNA replication process that gives it a permanent change. Oh my gosh. So the number of state variables are really the number of molecules in there, and the number of connections are like the number of reactions between these things. And that's just in one synapse. There's a lot more going on there than we know. Figuring that out is going to take a while. And as you might expect, there's a bunch of Caltech people working on that. Other people at other places too, but there's a lot of people here that are doing good work in that area. I've only talked tonight about things that I have some grasp of. There's a bunch of other things going on at Caltech that I admire enormously, I just don't know enough to talk about. But I can tell you one thing with great confidence. This is an observation that I'm not afraid to make as a prediction. That is, we can see these things in the future. The nearer term things like the energy stuff, the slightly longer things like what people are now calling quantum computing. It's a, it's, it's a bad name, but it's got good press, so they go with it, you know. That's going to take a bit longer. And then there's stuff about figuring out the brain, and that's going to take a lot longer, but has a lot of potential, too. But I can be very confident when I say those things are going to be important. But in the same way that Royal Sorensen didn't see information as a thing he could put his life work into, right now, today, we can't see the thing at all that's going to be the most important 100 years from now. <laughs>